I thought I would share some thoughts on hammer digit syndrome. And I will tell you, after 47 years of being in practice, what is simple in thought doesn't necessarily always come out on the operating table. So when one looks at a typical hammer toe, you recognize there's involvement in multiple joints. Metatarsophalangeal joint, proximal distal interphalangeal joints. And we need to understand and look at each component of that joint complex, if you will, when you're going in to do a hammer toe repair. So when you're simply making an incision, recognize that there are structures you're going to encounter that are going to have to be either lengthened or transected and ultimately repaired. So simply going through a proximal interphalangeal joint with a transverse dorsal incision, you recognize that you're probably going to transect the extensor digitorum longus tendon. Now, there are times, if you would like, you can actually dissect the tendon away and go into the joint without interfering with it at all. More times than not, however, you're using that incision to help maintain correction after your bone resection. As digits contract, you get a retrograde force on metatarsals, all component of in the hyperpronated foot. So we will often see concomitant keratomas beneath the second metatarsal or callus beneath the second metatarsal because of the retrograde force from the digit. This becomes a compounded problem as the patient continues to ambulate and get older and develop conditions that are going to require debridement from a conservative standpoint, orthotic control, or surgical intervention. Thank you.